Welcome to Swag, some wisdom and gear from college admission leaders. Today we are joined by Greg Edelman, who is the Director of Admission at Carnegie Mellon University. Greg, welcome. Hi, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Well, um, I want to start off with uh, giving you an opportunity to give your, your elevator pitch for why students should um, consider Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, sure. Happy to help. So Carnegie Mellon is a medium-sized research university located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which is considered an up-and-coming city, one that is constantly uh, evolving and reinventing itself over time. Uh, we're a relatively uh, small university, a relatively new university, too, to be honest. We've only been around since the 1900s. Uh, we were founded by Andrew Carnegie, uh, who was a steel magnet at, at one time was considered the world's richest person. And Andrew Carnegie in his later years had a saying that was to, uh, to, buy, to die rich is to die in disgrace and turned very much towards philanthropy. And uh, the city of Pittsburgh was the beneficiaries of that philanthropy, uh, like I said, back in the 1900s. And what was really interesting is at the time he founded a university that was really designed uh, to be very uh, practical and very uh, kind of blue collar and have the, um, a, a very hardworking mentality. So when we were founded, we were founded as a school uh, originally for the sons and daughters of Pittsburgh Steelworkers so that they could pursue opportunities in technical areas. So in engineering and the sciences so that they could uh, have a better life than at the time Andrew Carnegie perceived that their parents were having. But at the same time, what was really interesting is he also created a college of fine arts uh, and it was pretty cutting edge at that time because the, the School of Fine Arts uh, that he created were envisioned was really designed so you could be practicing art or artist and make a living and support your family as an artist. Up until that time, those that studied the arts did so for the education of ladies and gentlemen, um, but that, that wasn't our approach. You know, I went all the way back to 1900 to tell you that where we are today in 2021 is it's important to remember that those two very seemingly different threads or, or approaches towards education, technology, and the fine arts, over time um, at Carnegie Mellon, they've become so intertwined and stitched into the very fabric of what Carnegie Mellon is all about today. And we call that creative problem solving. So whether you're gonna study something in the fine arts or computer science or engineering or the sciences, you're gonna do so through that lens, that lens of approaching a problem and maybe looking at it in ways in which most people don't, and then having tools, the work ethic uh, to go ahead and, and solve it. So it's an exciting time to come to Carnegie Mellon. There's a lot of new building and expansion happening on campus. And you know we're, we're sitting here at what we refer to as, as kind of the, the intersection or the nexus of technology and the humanities. And we think we're well positioned to um, uh, educate and create the leaders of the next generation. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, well, let's jump right into the lightning round of questions. And okay. um, let's start, you mentioned a couple programs, but let's start with one unique program offered at, at CMU. Yeah, so interdisciplinary is a word I think that colleges like to throw around a lot, uh, and interdisciplinary at Carnegie Mellon is not just studying two seemingly different disciplines at the same time, but really it is combining two seemingly different disciplines to really get that creative energy going. So we have a program on campus called ID8, it stands for Integrated Design, Arts and Technology, and it combines all the different disciplines that we have on campus uh, to do some pretty cool and interesting things. An example would be video game design. Uh, you can study video game design through ID8. And I think a lot of people assume that video game design is very technical, and it is. But if you think about a video game, it needs a soundtrack, which is music. It needs a story, which is creative writing. Uh, it needs to be sold and marketed, which is business. So it brings people together from across the university, not to have one person do the whole thing, but to be able to work in teams, appreciate each other's uh, offerings towards a problem and really leverage the collective strengths of the university. So you don't have to apply to it. It's just something you sign up for once you're on campus. Um, and it's become very popular over the last couple of years. That's amazing. Um, how about uh, one fun tradition? Yeah, um, every year in April, uh, and we're hoping that this April we'll get back to it. Uh, we actually shut down campus for a week right before finals. And we bring a carnival to campus. Um, and uh, we allow students to kind of unwind. And it's a traditional uh, carnival, like you would imagine. There's Ferris wheels and rides for the kids. Uh, but we also do a version of soapbox racing that we refer to as buggy, 
uh, which brings together um, alums from all over the world. They all come back to campus and really try and uh, part participate in carnival. There's uh, stages for live music. I know we've had uh, in the last couple of years, uh, some really, really well-known uh, comedians and musicians um, to really, again, help the students unwind before approaching the rigors of finals. Wow, that's cool. Um, how about uh, favorite your favorite spot on campus? Yeah, I had to think about this one because I when I saw that question, I didn't think it would end up being my favorite spot, but to be honest, it is. Uh, the largest building that we have on campus is called the uh, uh, the Tepper Building, and it uh, houses the Tepper School of Business. Uh, why it's my favorite place on campus is because it sits in the heart of campus, uh, and it's been pretty amazing how all students are kind of using that as a hub to work, to eat, to hang out. And it's not just the undergrads. Carnegie Mellon has a pretty robust graduate population as well. And it's really that one place on campus where regardless of gear or what you're studying, you can see the cross section of Carnegie Mellon hanging out over a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's kind of uh, zoom out beyond uh, your campus and into the kind of wild world of college admission. And I'd love to hear one of your, um, kind of what you see as the greatest myth in college admission. Selectivity does not equal quality. So the more selective the school is, um, it should in no way determine whether or not that school should be higher up on your list or lower on your list. The only ranking that matters out there is how you rank the schools. Uh, the great thing about going to school in the United States is if you want to, you can. Um, and you do not have to go to one of the most selective schools in the country to get a great education in the solid future. Well said. Well said. Short and sweet. Um, how about uh, one truth about college admission? Yeah, be authentic. We honestly do want to hear from you and hear about your story. Uh, increasingly, uh, there are so many agencies out there trying to help you overthink your essays, overthink your letter, letters of recommendation. They become overly polished, and then we lose that authentic voice. It's okay to have a typo in your essay. It's okay to to, to trip over your words from time to time. We really do want to hear from the individual students because the only way we'll have a you is if you apply. So just be as true to yourself as you can be. That's great. Yeah, there's no, no such thing as infallible human beings. Um, Carnegie Mellon's done a lot in terms of access and equity in the last couple of years and, and would love to hear about kind of what you see as, as something important that students should know about uh, equity and access and affordability. We've, we've really tried to hold the mirror up to ourselves over the last couple of years and evaluate our processes, especially around uh, diversity, access uh, and inclusion and equity. Diversity is the easy part, to be honest, but really what we're looking for is an inclusive process that's an equitable process. Um, are we successful in that space? That's not up to me to decide. I think our students will tell us whether or not we're successful in that space. Uh, but as we strive towards really having an inclusive process, we're, we are realizing um, that not only are we going to have to mitigate disadvantage in the process, we also have to remove advantage. Uh, and we've evaluated our processes to make sure that we're not inherently uh, advantaging uh, students. For example, we don't look at demonstrated interest. We don't um, uh, accept any supplemental materials. We don't accept additional letters of recommendation. If everyone can't answer a question or participate in a part of the application, then our approach is then nobody should be able to. Uh, so we really try hard to, to make sure that we're being as equitable as we can there. And again, I think that's up to the students. And we'd love to hear from you as to whether or not we're being successful in that space. And in terms of the affordability, Carnegie Mellon is one of the more expensive schools in the country. But please don't let that be a deterrent for admission. Um, talk to us when you're sophomores or juniors in high school, I mean, we can really help you figure out whether or not Carnegie Mellon is going to be a financially viable option. We don't want that to be a deterrent for any student um, from considering Carnegie Mellon. Such important points. Thanks. Um, okay, last question. What is the best question a student should ask on a college tour? And what would your answer be for CMU? Well, ours, I, I approach this question from the... Um, student perspective with student tour guides. Um, I'll answer your question in a second, but if you have student tour guides, ask them why they came to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and then the other question I would definitely ask is where can Carnegie Mellon do better? So from the student perspective, I think tour guides are really quite good at giving you um, 
what's going well, what works, what, what students tend to enjoy, but ask the other side of that coin uh, and, and ask where CMU can do better. For me, a question I tend to enjoy is when students ask me, um, and it's such a data question, but that's a Carnegie Mellon thing is, you know, what's, what's the freshman to sophomore year retention rate? How many students picked Carnegie Mellon and then decided to come back the next year? Um, and I think that's a very telling statistic uh, for us, it's in the high 90s, it's 98, 99 percent. So students that pick Carnegie Mellon tend to enjoy it. Um, but it's it's an interesting way to look at um, how happy students are at a particular university. Yeah, and those are exceptional numbers. Um, great. Well, that is the wisdom. Now it is time for the gear. So we are going to reach into the uh, swag bag and see what you you've sent us. All right, what do we got? Ooh, look at this. So that is, that is something we send to all admitted students to the university. And there's a campaign around it where we want students to fly the Carnegie Mellon colors and banner with pride. And you know, we look forward to sending that to a lot of you guys, hopefully in the, in the very near future. I love it. I love it. Well, Carnegie Mellon has uh, graciously donated this uh, piece of swag to a uh, organization promoting access and equity in college admissions. So we are grateful for that. And um, Greg, thanks for the wisdom and for the gear. And we'll see you next time on the College Guidance Network. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck, everyone.